Uh, he wants to ask that. Oh, you're very polarizing on the uh, on your. No, on no, your no, let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. Speaking of hate. Okay. No, no, but hold on. <laughs> Speaking oh, of transition. On, you actually think you're polarizing though, because because people say you're polarizing. People say you you're actually uh, deliberate with the way you write. Do you no, view I, yourself as that, or are you telling the truth? That's the question. No, I, I view myself as writing in a very straightforward forthright, clear-cut way. There are certain things in Islam that are clear-cut. They're, they're, they're not uh, fuzzy. They're not cotton candy. They're, it's very clear-cut. And you're not supposed to portray them as being fuzzy. Things that are clear-cut are not supposed to, you sh you're not supposed to like be ambiguous about them or be wishy-washy about these kinds of issues that are clear-cut. Right. And so I'm just trying to be clear-cut on, on things that are clear-cut. I want to be clear-cut. I want to be straight, right? Well, and See, people, I would say you're polarizing. No, I, I would say on some. So that's gonna be polarizing. That's gonna if you're clear cut, it's gonna Islam. Then you're saying Islam is polarizing. No, tell no, me no, something. No. Tell me something that if so if you <laughs> this is people people who say that oh Daniel you're polarizing or don't Daniel or you're aggressive or this and that. Tell me, give me an example. What is one thing that I've said? One thing that I've posted that is polarizing in a way that Islam is not polarizing in. Or it's not, it's not clear cut anymore. Yeah, I'll, pull huh? I'll try to pull something up right now. Rex. Go ahead. No, um, Yo, but the, I, would, I would say that, um, do you do you believe that in some of your articles, uh, you go out, good argument. Wait, wait. Do you think that in some of your articles that you write on Facebook, or at least the ones I read, uh, do you deliberately, <laughs> are you Rex. deliberately polarizing? I mean, do you tell do me? No, give no, me an no, example. No. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. I, I give an example. I plead the fifth. Like, like, yeah, no. He, Paz basically saying you're kind of a provocateur. Well, I don't think that. I think you just speak the truth. No, I don't do that. I don't. Yeah. If I were a provocateur, okay, provocateur means like you're you, regardless of what is true, you're just saying it just to get a reaction, regardless of what the truth is. That's not how I do it. That's I'm not That's deliberately perfect. looking out looking for things that, oh, everyone thinks this, I'm going to say the opposite. Oh, and I get a kick out of that. And I get my jollies off of being contrarian. No, that's not what I'm doing. Okay. Things are, if something is clear, I'm going to say something that's clear. And I, and I do, I address things that I think are an issue where I, where I see that there's a lot of confusion. When I see Muslims adopting this kind of feminist ideology and they're saying things that are contrary to the deen, they're throwing the ulama under the bus. Okay, I'm going to yeah. say that that's wrong. I'm going to say that this is a wrong mentality when you when you're saying that oh hijab is about choice and choice is so important and blah 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 you're saying things that are taking people out of the religion that you're saying things that are distorting people's understanding of the deen you're t teaching them things that are going to make them hate the quran you're teaching them things that are going that make them hate the prophet sallallahu you're teaching them things that are going that make them hate the khulafa okay that's yes, what you're teaching exactly. them Exactly. I'm not gonna stand yeah. for that. I'm not gonna stand and be quiet. I'm not gonna shut my mouth because if I say, "Oh, uh, maybe this is wrong. You shouldn't be saying this." That you're gonna, "Oh, Daniel's so polarizing and aggressive." No, that's that's nonsense. Okay. Yeah, I'm I, not I a agree. Provocateur. I'm not a provocateur any more than if you read any of these classical texts or if you hear any of these. Uh, not necessarily ulama. Just take the average Muslim from a. The previous generation or the average Muslim from pre 9-11 how about that it's not even 20 years right takes an average Muslim and the kinds of things that they will say just in their expression of Islam oh that's whoa dude come on you're taking it too far that's not PC that's not you know diplomatic that's not, that's not, that's not cool, bro. <laughs> you're that's, that's not friendly. cool you're driving people away from Islam bro that's you know why are you dude where's your edda man <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly I, this is this is just Islam. I'm just I'm just talking about Islam, my, my religion. What's wrong? Whoa, dude, come on. Well, this is so that's the thing. No, this is not this is nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna say, you see, you're not you're not a provocateur. You just speak the truth and you're straightforward. And the reason people think you are is because people are shying away from these topics. So when you shy away from the topics, someone like you who says who says facts that are in the that are straight or mainstream orthodox Sunni Islam interpretations, right? When, when you say these things that are actually in, within the tradition, and then, the, like, what you call it, when you have, like, speakers shying away from these topics, they become, uh, what you call it, they become, uh, they become weird. They become, like, aggressive, even though you're not being aggressive, right? It's just, it's just, it's perceived that way because of today's paradigm and discourse, 
right? Yeah, I mean, this is, there are certain things that, I have two points. The first point is that this idea of being polarizing, no one says that on other issues. Like you have people who are saying Muslim figures who are insulting like Donald Trump day and night. There's, you know, fine. Like they're using, you know, vulgar language or or they're like going like this women's march that just happened. You have these Muslim figures are going there and shouting all, all this and this and that or they're like going uh to the the supreme court kavanaugh hearings like they're getting arrested like they're getting they're sitting in against like trump and being arrested by police because they're like doing this kind of protest no one says oh wow that's polarizing oh wow you know that's so that's so aggressive like why are you where's your adab like you're breaking the law like oh you're polarizing americans because don't you know like 50 percent of america is actually republican 50 percent of america is actually like supporting trump and like you're you're you know, cursing him out, you're calling him a mother effer on TV, and like, aren't you? No, no, but that's okay, that, right? right? The people who are criticizing me, the people who are, yeah, exactly, the people who are criticizing me as, oh, he has bad ab and he's polarizing, he's just a provocateur. They have nothing to say. They have literally nothing to say about these individuals. Why? Why? Because the, it's, they're just, you agree with their politics, that's all. You agree with their position. Yeah. That's sad, that, right? So that's, yeah, it, it is. Yeah, that's that. I agree. It's inconsistent. Um, it's completely inconsistent, and it's it's transparently okay. inconsistent. Like, there's people. Like, I remember, like, people are criticizing me for being polarizing and being aggressive, and then they're turning around and supporting w- one of these like uh, feminist activists, saying that yeah, I went to uh, Eid prayers. And the Khatib didn't uh, mention mention Ibrahim ISM, but didn't mention Hajab, and he excluded her. He excluded women. So this is patriarchal, and I didn't need to hear that kind of misogynistic Khatib. And going on this rant, basically, completely dismissing uh, whoever the Khatib was, completely dismissing like and go, just spouting off, you know. And you criticizing me on uh, one day one, you're turning around the same day and praising, oh, mashallah, speak truth, sisters, truth to power. You're an apologetic. Yeah, you're un- empowered. Like you say, oh, subhanAllah, we really need to reflect on these deep truths from this feminist activist. Oh, subhanAllah. Oh, Daniel, you're so polarizing. Oh, where'd you learn? Where'd you study? Where's your adab? Like, this is the kind of inconsistency. Like, what are you yeah, talking Yeah, double standard. Like, double okay, standard. it's a complete double standard. I found one passage, um, like I've been just like, I didn't, I didn't pull up an article from before. So I was just kind of just quickly skimming. Um, I found this one paragraph. When it comes to child abuse, women are far more likely to be abusers than men. Okay. Okay. They're fine. Fact. Okay. Fact. That's sure. A fact. Okay. Statistically, According to the U.S. Department of Health. Hold on. Before you continue, statistically for our listeners, Daniel's not just saying that. Oh yeah. He's just not, no, it's coming from the U.S. Okay. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, uh, approximately 40% of child abuse, of child victims of abuse were maltreated by their mothers acting alone, while only 18% of them were maltreated by their fathers acting alone. Okay, and then, and then like, you, you post, like, a, a picture of the girl, uh, Lauren Wade, Ya Rabbi. Okay, and then afterwards, you write, women have a child abuse problem. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the case, yeah. That's not polarizing, because that's... <laughs> no, bro, that's polarizing. That's no, it's not. Yeah, it is. Come on. No, statistically, they're higher. So it's a problem. So we should address it. If it was the other way around, if it was men abuse, uh, like men abuse women, for example, right? Everyone's okay with the, the discussing that. Okay, yeah. Everyone, okay, everyone is okay with it. But what my point is that, is that Brother Daniel, he like deliberately like, it like it goes into the opposite direction. No, no but try to, under, try to understand what I'm trying to do with that sentence. Okay, like since you mentioned a specific example, like let me give you the intention behind it. No, no, I, I kind of I understand the attention because like normally it's the other way around. So now you're just kind of flipping the narrative right back on them. No, but why am I flipping How the ridiculous narrative? ridiculous the first argument was in the first place. Yeah, exactly. Because these are the kinds of statements like men are, you know, we have men a toxic trash. masculinity problem. Men, we have toxic patriarchy is a problem. Men are just inherently abusive and violent. Men are uh, inherently oppressive. They've subjugated women, and we have patriarchy that has dictated uh, how women have lived their lives for centuries. And we need to fight against this patriarchy. All of this is a feminist discourse that is attacking. Um, it's attacking men, but the point is that it's attacking tradition. It's attacking Islam. It's attacking tradition in general, and that's, this goes back to progressivism. 
right? And so this is the kind of argument that they make and the kinds of claims that they make. And it's taken for granted. Like it's people just think like, yeah, you're right. Women were mistreated in the past and now we know better. Women, people in the past were misogynist abusers and now we, we just know better. Like this is the kind of view that people have of history. It's a progressive view. Mm -hmm. yeah, but this is inaccurate. It's incorrect. No, like Muslim women were not mistreated. Our forefathers, our ancestors, the Muslim scholars, the Muslim uh, society for centuries did not abuse, systematically abuse and oppress 50% of the population. No, that is simply not the case. And I mean, they'll bring examples to say like why it's the case to try to prove their, their point. But all of these... Uh, examples that they bring you can refute them easily you can refute them easily and then one example in this article when i say that women have a child abuse problem okay it's because they've okay I, you can take many different statistics and make it seem like oh this is something inherent to women like women are inherently wanting to beat and abuse and kill their children Right. right. That's an incorrect move. But that's the same exact move that you're making with men when it comes to things like uh, domestic violence. Because, right. yeah, there is there's men uh, domestic when it comes to domestic abuse. Isn't men are the perpetrators of 60 percent of the time and 40 percent of the time is women. Women are actually it's not that this disparate. Right. Yeah, when it comes little, to, yeah, yeah, but men are still a little bit above, but they still use that statistic to say that, oh, well, see, men are abusing their wives. Women are, or men are abusing their wives. Men are abusive. This is why we need to dismantle the patriarchy. This is why we need to have feminism. So they use that kind of argument. Well, okay, you can flip that. You can flip that and use another statistic and come up with the, with the opposite conclusion. Right. So what that should tell you is that the whole mentality, the whole mentality is wrong. The whole mentality is uh, vacuous. It's hollow. You can manipulate it however you want to make these stupid kinds of uh, points and, and to and endorse your stupid feminist project. Right. So right. In, in, no, 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 it's, it's not. Right. I'm just going to summarize that point. No, I agree with that. Okay. I agree with that. And here's how I'm going to summarize it. Okay. So brother Daniel, you're using polarizing, uh, you're using a polarizing rhetorical strategy to undermine feminist rhetoric. I'm mirroring the feminist rhetoric to show how ridiculous it is. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Fine. I'm not a men, quote unquote, men's rights activist. I'm not a men's rights act. No. Men's rights activists are, I feel very uh, superficial. Like they're, they point to certain things. They basically have using the same kind of feminist uh, critique. Okay. They're using the same kind of feminist critique. They, they make good points. Like for example, uh, I cite in that same article, I cite another point that for crimes, when you look at um, the conviction rate and the sentencing, so men get 60% more severe sentencing for the same crime as women. So both genders are committing the same crime, but men are getting sentenced to longer prison terms, more severe consequences, even though they're doing the same crime. Okay, so this is, so men's rights activists will point and say, oh, well, this is biased, like, this is not fair, like, we need to, like, make things more even, right? Okay, that's fine, like, that's a fine critique. Or they'll, they'll point to, like, uh, marriage and divorce and child custody and how in 99% of cases or 95% of cases, women are granted custody even when they're abusive or what, even when they have drug problems and so forth. I mean, these are all good critiques, they're fine. But it's very shallow because there's a bigger problem here. The bigger problem is how liberalism, how modernism, how modernity has destroyed the relationships between men and women and has weakened the, the institution of marriage, has weakened the institution of family. That's causing all of these kinds of problems, all of these kinds of conflicts. And the state, the muscular police state has taken the place of the family and, and, and has created this kind of atomized individualistic society in which all of this kind of all these problems arise that's the real critique that's the deeper critique that men's rights activists aren't really necessarily making that critique uh, but they're just they're just mirroring feminist thought but feminist thought is itself so incoherent and stupid <laughs> so that's not they're not like in, doing any, anything better than that so i'm just like parody it's like a parody it's parroting it's parroting it's mirroring to show the yeah, to show the ludicrousness of it. Did you say parroting or parodying? Both. Both. Okay. Both. <laughs> Both.